A lot of talk in the coronavirus pandemic now centers around variants and how well vaccines will work in protecting against them. On Sunday 60 Minutes, Dr. John LaPook reports on how variants work and how prepared scientists are to create new vaccines. We are reading Evolution's lab notebook. Every time one of these pops up, it's telling us exactly how evolution benefits at the expense of the fitness of humankind. Dr. Francis Collins, director of the National Institutes of Health, is a geneticist who 20 years ago oversaw the decoding of the human genome. He says he's surprised by how much this virus is evolving. Why are the variants of concern that we're seeing in places like the United Kingdom, South Africa, and Brazil of such concern? It turns out that some of these mutations actually change the behavior of this virus in a way that makes it more infectious or more serious. And the evidence is that for both the B117, which is primarily seen in the UK, but increasingly in the US, and the South African B1351, that they are more transmissible. They're just really successful. We're seeing evolution in motion. I think it's been rarely seen as clearly as right now how evolution works. In that way, it was pretty predictable. What wasn't predictable for me anyway was that there would be so many copies of this virus that even a slow evolutionary process could, in just a matter of a few months, uh, produce some viruses that we're worried about. And there are so many copies because it's a pandemic and it's been very successful in infecting millions and millions of people. So many copies concerning indeed. Dr. John LaPook joins me now. Dr. LaPook, we're familiar with a number of those variants being here in South Florida. Tell us why we should be concerned about that. You know, hi, Lauren. You know, first of all, they're variants of concern. They're not variants of panic. So there, there are things that we can do, but they're of con concern because these mutations change, can change the way the virus behaves. It can make it more transmissible, more deadly, and more resistant to our own immune systems, whether it's because we were previously infected or we got a vaccine. So it's something to wake up to uh, and, and do something about. It's not something to panic about, but we can't just say, oh, we're going to open up, we're going to go back to normal the way things were, because we still have some things we got some work to do still. And, and what are you seeing as far as the vaccines that we currently have available and those variants? Are the variants responsive to the vaccines we have on the market right now? You know, this still remains to be seen. For some of them, there's some good uh, signs here. So, for example, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine have good uh, uh, immunogenicity. They're, they're able to work pretty well at inactivating the virus in a test tube uh, for, the, for the virus, the variant that's from the United Kingdom. Now, in terms of the South Africa variant, uh, uh, more good news is that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, uh, which was used down there in a clinical trial, even though it was less good at eliciting a strong immune response than uh, against that variant than against, say, the original strain, um, it still was able to protect against serious illness, against hospitalization and death. So those are the things we really care about. I think we have a window of opportunity right now where we can start to get our arms around it, and we have to stop this virus from mutating. The way we stop it from mutating is to stop it from spreading from one person to another and the way we do that is vaccinate 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 if you're eligible and then do all the things I know everybody's sick and tired of it uh, masks social distancing washing our hands outdoors safer than indoors and we can't say okay the number of cases are now down it's back to normal it's not back to normal it could come roaring right back the CDC, however, has issued the guidance for people who are fully vaccinated. They can gather together without masks indoors, but everyone has to be vaccinated. But right now we're seeing a lot of people where maybe the kids, the adult kids are not vaccinated, but the parents, grandparents are vaccinated. So it's, it's status quo for them, right? They still need to be careful. Yeah, I mean, you know, you should go to the CDC website because they very specifically talk about it. You know, if there's two people who are vaccinated in small groups, they can get together without a mask. Uh, but uh, if, and if one person's vaccinated, the other one isn't. If that person who is not vaccinated is not at increased risk for some kind of a, a severe complication from COVID, you could also be indoors without a mask. But if they are, if it's somebody who is obese or has diabetes, immunocompromised, one of these conditions we've all read about that can make it that if the unlikely, less likely possibility somebody who's vaccinated could be still asymptomatically carrying the virus and shedding it, if they catch that virus, then there could be a real bad outcome. So it's a matter of 
of risk benefit, nothing's 100% safe, but I think for everybody out there listening, what they should know is this is no time to go out and party and have another super spreader event, especially, this is the worst, I think, in my mind in terms of risk. Going indoors, in a bar, I know people want to get back to normal, I do, but when you are in a door, in a bar, without a mask, and you're close to somebody because it's loud, and you're talking loudly, those aerosols that carry the virus, that can go across a room, build up over time, especially if it's poorly ventilated, and they can infect somebody else. If you're 20 feet away from somebody indoors, and you're not wearing a mask, and they're smoking, you can smell the smoke. If you can hear, smell the smoke, you can also get infected with the virus. Great advice, even a year into this pandemic. Dr. John LaPook, thank you so much for joining us. And of course, you can look for Dr. LaPook's full report on 60 Minutes. That's Sunday at 7, only right here on CBS4.